Hey guys, what's up? Thanks so much for stopping by. I hope your day is going well so far. If this is your first time here, welcome. My name is Dana. I'm so happy to have you. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing all of my top picks and recommendations for the Sephora VIB sale. I realize I'm a little bit late. The sale ends on the 9th, but there's still plenty of time to shop. Now I have done several of these VIB recommendation videos in the past. I will be sure to link them down below. I do recommend checking those out just because I didn't want to do any repeat products in today's video, but I would say like 99.9% .9 of the products in the previous videos are products that I still genuinely love, but I didn't want to be sitting here beating a dead horse, repeating the same thing. So you may have heard of some of these products just from past favorites videos, because that's why I'm recommending them. They're my favorites and I love them. So I thought I would go ahead and just start off with hair care and skincare first and then get into makeup. Let's go ahead and jump right into skincare. This is from Laneige. It's a K-Beauty brand. It has been sold at Sephora for quite a while now, but this is one of their newer releases introduced to Sephora. I do believe Sephora has the exclusive of this when it comes to US stores, but it has been on the market for a while now. I've been using it for, I don't know if it has been quite a year yet, possibly, but it's been several months. I adore this product. This is the Laneige Cream Skin Refiner Mist. So Sephora did have this in stores a few months back, but it was just in the original dump out bottle container, which obviously it's the same product. It's still great, but there's something about just misting this toner on that is just so much more satisfying. It has the most fine, even mist. So many other setting sprays need to jump on the bandwagon of this bottle because they have their mister down just right. But if you've never tried this before, it's basically supposed to be a full jar of their cream skin moisturizer melted down into a toner form. So don't think your typical alcohol stripping drying based toner. Whenever it comes to KBD, toners tend to be more milky essences that are supposed to really give you a supple, hydrated skin. I love this. I use it morning and night. It's absolutely amazing. I cannot recommend this product enough. Let's kind of stick with moisturizers. This is a product I think I have talked about in a previous VIB recommendations, but this is another product that I've gone through numerous jars of. I absolutely love it. It's incredible. It just makes my skin just so hydrated, glowy, dewy, makeup glides right onto it. I don't ever use this at night. This is reserved for my daytime moisturizer. My moisturizer that I use right before makeup. Obviously, whenever I first wake up, I do go in with just a very hydrating moisturizer. This is hydrating as well, but I just find it to be the most ideal pre-makeup type of moisturizer. Now I pull this aside because I also wanted to mention that they do have this amazing gift set out right now that does have another product that I love. I forgot to bring it down, the Tatcha Rice Cream Cleanser. Now they've had a rice powder out for a while, but they recently came out with this rice cream clean cleanser cleanser that is pH neutral. It's supposed to have Japanese red algae in it, vitamin, I think B12, A, B2, maybe vitamin E. It's basically inspired by the Japanese rice cleansing ritual. I've talked about this before in the past where my mom has also rinsed rice and then reserved the water to the side. I think you're really only supposed to do it with certain rice though, not like all rice, but you reserve the water to the side and you cleanse your face with that and almost has this milky texture. It makes your skin just feel so hydrated. So there is a Japanese cleansing ritual that's very similar where they use Japanese rice powder, Okinawa, red algae, and hyaluronic acid. So it's just, I mean, a moisture punch for your face. That cleanser is like my ideal morning time cleanser. Not only does it make your skin feel clean and refreshed, it really does make your skin feel moisturized. There's no weird like tightening type of feeling sometimes that you get with stripping cleansers. I really just wanted to mention that gift set because if you were interested in both the cleanser and the dewy skin cream, I think that would be a great way to try everything out at a discounted price. This is one thing that I'm slightly annoyed about. I'm pretty sure it is the same formula. I need to go through and track down the ingredient list, but this concoction right here is another moisturizer that I have been loving both morning and night. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I reserve the dewy skin cream to apply onto my skin right before makeup, but the moisturizer that I apply right after washing my face first thing in the morning, because typically it's hours later that I apply my makeup, is this mixture right here. So this is the Laura Mercier Flawless Skin Infusion Day Rose Nourishing Oil. Since then, they've upgraded the packaging, which I actually like this older packaging more. I'm thinking that happened whenever Laura Mercier went in and repackaged all their primers as well. Don't quote me on this, but I'm pretty sure they are the same products, but I have another backup of this one too. I just really enjoy this oil. So I'll go in with a dollop of the Fresh Deep Hydration Face Cream with Time Release, Hydro Patches, Moisturizes, and Nourishes. This is the 3.3 ounce jar. It's a glass drawer. I dropped this on my foot the other day. 
I was miserable for a few days. This one retails for $68. There's a mini that's 0.5 ounces for $15 and then a 1.6 ounce for $42. This one also has a really great gift set that has the Soy Fresh Cream Cleanser or is it just Soy Fresh Cleanser? I don't think I've ever tried that one before but I've heard so many people rave about that cleanser. This cream, a mini of their Rose Lip Balm and then the Rose Deep Hydration Toner that has like the oil with the petals in it. It's an oil toner that's really great too. So that's another gift set to check out if you have been interested in this line. But this concoction here just makes my skin feel so, so hydrated, especially this time of the year. If you're looking for something that is very nourishing on the skin but doesn't feel overly heavy, try out this mixture. Obviously, it doesn't have to be this exact oil, but I really, really do recommend this face cream. I've actually been going in with a teeny tiny ration of this, both on my elbows and my ankles, just because I noticed a huge difference on my face. Those areas need help too, so I was like, why not? Only a little bit though, because I do want to keep this for my face. All right, I just have one other skincare product. This is one of my favorite vitamin C's. The only reason I haven't repurchased it is because I have two or three other in my collection. Vitamin C is something that can go bad pretty quickly. You wanna keep it in a dark place. That's one thing I really appreciate about this packaging. If you ever have like a clear packaged vitamin C, keep it out of direct sunlight because things can go bad quickly. But this was one that I just really enjoyed. I know everyone raves about these summer Fridays. Was Jet Lag the newer one or the original one? The one in the blue tube. That mask is nice, but this is their star product in my opinion. I just really enjoyed this CC cream, or not CC cream, sorry. It's CC Me Serum. It's a vitamin C, but then there's also squalane and something else in it. I really did notice a difference with just like the tone and texture of my skin while using this. I know everyone loves the SkinCeuticals, um, vitamin C ferulic acid, isn't that what it's called? I'm actually using that right now. It's good, it's medical grade skincare, but that vitamin C smells like straight up hot dog water. If you've used it before, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Either hot dog water or a toddler that just ate hot dogs and then burped in your face. It's, it's a lot to get past, it works, but I just like that I get the same results from this, at least I personally feel like I do, without smelling like I just rubbed a pack of hot dogs all over my face. This is the Living Proof Dry Shampoo. I've tried out so many different dry shampoos. I'm not saying you have to buy a high end, but if you ever have been curious about this one, now would be the time with a discount. But I do wanna mention, I know Living Proof does do deals over on their like actual website quite often through various bloggers. I've tried so, so many different dry shampoos. I love both high end and drugstore dry shampoos. One of my all time favorites from the drugstore it's not as cheap as like Batiste or Dove, but the Kristen S dry shampoo is amazing. It smells great. But I really like this dry shampoo because I feel like whenever I use this on day one, I really don't have to go in and use it again until like day three or day four. Not only does it absorb the oil, but it also gives you volume. However, I hate the volume blast from Living Proof. I know so many people swear by that product. I've given that product so many different chances. I had to return it. The second I spray that product into my hair, I feel like I immediately have to wash it. I want volume in my hair, but I still wanna be able to comb my fingers through my hair and not just feel like, like I just, I can't do that product. But the dry shampoo is really good. So if you've ever been someone who's used the volume blast and you're like, no, I don't even wanna bother with the dry shampoo, they're totally, totally different products. There is no gross stickiness to the dry shampoo. Now moving on to makeup. Wow, when I look at my pile, I just feel like it looks really pitiful, but I didn't wanna just grab like mediocre products or products I've only been using for a month and say, yeah, these are my recommendations. But something that I can definitely stand behind are these two eyelash curlers. I actually have three. The other like, I guess honorable mention is the Surratt one. But when I looked at that one, not only was it the most expensive, it also doesn't come with replacement pads, at least on Sephora's site. They probably do on their own site just because I know that is a pretty like strong artistry brand, but on Sephora, they don't sell the replacement pads. The Shiseido eyelash curler does sell replacement pads. This one is $22, both this one and the Laura Mercier eyelash curler. Now, if you already have amazing lashes and you don't need to curl your lashes or you just have larger eyes, you're like, what's so special about these eyelash curlers versus ones that you can find at the drugstore? If you have more almond-shaped eyes, hooded eyes, just smaller eyes in general, you'll notice that a lot of eyelash curlers, I don't have any on hand because I'm so particular about mine. 
a lot of them will have a stronger C shape. If you take a look at these, do you see how these look much flatter? These allow to really get onto your eye and get all of your lashes from your inner corner to your outer corner. Sometimes when you go in with some lash curlers, for instance, Tarte. Tarte is one that I know makes adorable lash curlers. They have like bedazzled ones for the holidays. Those will only get my middle lashes. They won't even come close to the inner and outer lashes. So if you have an eye shape similar to mine or you've just noticed a lot of the lash curlers at the drugstore or just various other lash curlers don't work for you, these are two that I highly recommend. The Shiseido one also sells replacement pads for I believe $6. I've had the same one for years. I think it's gotten to the point where it does feel a little bit, bit looser now to I just think I need a new one and they have a holiday edition that's gold. So I do want that. Let's talk foundations. I pulled out two of them. The Ilia Super Serum Skin Tint SPF 40 with Niacinamide, Squalane, and Hyaluronic Acid. I don't know if I did a dedicated video to this foundation, but I know I have a video where I did a demo application. So I'll go ahead and I'll link that in the eye and down below. If you are looking for like the glossiest glass skin dewy foundation, this one is it. Now, obviously if you don't want it super glassy and dewy, you could always go in and set it with a powder, but just the formula of this is so beautiful on the skin. It feels weightless. You're not gonna get full coverage out of this, but you do get a very nice medium coverage, or if you go in just with your fingers in a light amount, you can keep it really nice and sheer, just like a your skin but better type of look. I absolutely love this formula. Now going to the complete opposite coverage spectrum, we have the NARS Soft Matte Complete Foundation. I have mine in the shade Punjab Medium 1. I'm typically always this shade, even with NARS Sheer Glow. Obviously though, if I had a self tan, I would go a little bit deeper, but just for my all year round shade, this is it. If you are looking for something that is full, full coverage, this is it full coverage without feeling super heavy on the skin. I will say if you have normal to dry skin, this is a foundation that requires prep work. I'll go ahead and link the video here. I had to go in with several products as a moisturized base. If you just go in with like a primer and this and you have normal to dry skin, I really don't think you'll like it. Also, I do find applying like with your hands, like really spreading it out with your hands first and then going in with a damp sponge also helps but the coverage really is amazing. If you have any special events coming up and you just want everything covered, but to not have to feel like you have a ton of makeup on your face, I think this would be a great option. NARS always has a pretty good shade range too. Okay, I just have one lip product. Lip products are something that you can find so many great options at the drugstore. For me personally, I feel like it's too late to do a wish list item, but one of the items in my cart right now is the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Kit. I love the Pillow Talk lip liner. I don't think I have the gloss. I always went in with the Pillow Talk lip liner with her gloss in high society on top. That combo, if you love like a gorgeous pinky mauvey nude is amazing. But this is one that I wanted to talk about. I definitely do think it is underrated. Now I have several shades in this product, but this is my personal favorite. So this is one of the NARS Afterglow Lip Balms in Laguna. If you are just looking for a super easy color, to apply that gives you hydration, but then it's something that you don't need to go in with a mirror and you love nudes. This one is so, so beautiful. I feel like on my hand, well, no, you can see it. It doesn't look like much. Now, if you have really, really rosy, naturally pigmented lips, you probably wouldn't get as much out of this as I do. I've talked about this a million times, but I feel like I have like corpse lips. They just don't really have, not horse, corpse. Did I say corpse? That just sounded weird. Um, they just don't really have much natural color to them. So with this product, I feel like I actually get a lot of color payoff from it. And I just love the glossy finish of it. It's so beautiful, but it is pricey. It's $39. No, not 39. That would be outrageous. $28, which is still outrageous for a lip balm. But if you are looking for a stocking stuffer idea that you could split up, or if you really like just easy one and done lip balmy type of products like this with just sheer color, there's a gift set for $39. Unfortunately, this one doesn't come in the full size. It comes in a mini, but lip products, unless you're just someone with like one or two lip products in your collection, how often do you really finish a full lip product? I know I don't just because I have so many, but it comes with one full size, I think maybe in Dolce Vita, three minis, and this is one of the minis, but I just really like these products. They're nourishing on the lips with just a really cute, glossy, sheer color. Okay, and then the very final product I have here, I told you guys I really didn't have too many makeup products, but if you are looking for more makeup recommendations, just check out my previous Sephora VIB videos down below. The Jouer Blush and Bloom 
cheek and lip duos. I don't use these too often on my lips. They feel okay on the lips, but I definitely prefer them more as just a sole cheek product. I will say Inspire is my least favorite. That's just shade preference though. The formula all across the board and all three sticks are amazing, but you have to like Coralie Pinks to like this one. I just find this is more suitable for spring and summer for me. And also just because I'm more of like a neutral type of blush lover. So I go in with Celebrate and Uplift. These are such a beautiful, creamy, blendable formula. I've applied them on top of powders before with no problem, but I typically just go in after I applied my foundation and cream bronzer, I'll just go in and smile, dab some on my cheeks and then either blend it out with my fingers or whatever sort of like beauty sponge that I'm using. So this one here in Uplift is more like pinky and mauve. So then in this one you have Celebrate Me, which is more of a rosy mauve. And then Promise Me is this beautiful, just dusty rose neutral shade. They look shiny on my hands right now, but they do kind of just set into, I guess, like a natural satin finish. It's not like a cream to powder product, but it doesn't stay super glossy on your cheeks either. However, if you did go in with any sort of glowy setting spray, for instance, the Pixie, is it glowy makeup setting spray? It's my favorite, but I can't think of the name or the Tatcha Luminous Mist. Either of those, they will kind of keep the blushes looking a little bit more glossy on the cheeks, but I've just been really enjoying those. And there you have it. There are all of my Sephora VIB recommendations. I would love to hear some of yours. Let me know down below what you plan on picking up during the sale, or most of you probably have already shopped the sale. So if you did, I would love to hear what you purchased if you guys have any recommendations for me. And that's pretty much it for this one. As always, thank you so much for spending part of your day with me. If you haven't already, I would love if you subscribed. Stick around some more. If you got some more time on your hands, I'll be sure to link a few videos here. And that's pretty much it. So I will see you guys next time. Bye.